So the other day we left off with a finished skeleton of the vertical stabilizer. That is all clecoed together at this point. And the next step in the instructions is to take the skin and fit that skin around this very carefully. Clico it in place basically, and then match drill all the holes that run on the sides of that. Once all that's done, uh, we take the whole thing back apart, prime all the parts, and then reassemble and rivet it all together uh, in a very specific order that we've got in the instructions. So what I've been doing off camera a little bit is spending a good amount of time smoothing out the edges, uh, also trying to bend the flanges here to make sure that they are kind of tapered in line with the skin, because if they're not, then the skin is gonna kind of bulge around that. I mean, basically any imperfections underneath the skin are gonna show up through the skin, and we certainly don't want that to happen. So, took a lot of time to kind of get that straightened out. That's all kind of done. So let's see if we can stick this thing on the skin. How hard can it be? had to flute some of these flanges. And to be completely honest with you, um, fluting looks pretty simple. You bend with these fluting pliers, but I wasn't really sure what it was I was, I was looking at, right? Um, you take some of these pieces and you lay them flat on a table. And a lot of times, you know, when they sit on the table, they kind of rock back and forth or they don't seem quite flat. But that's actually not what the fluting is all about um, because the sides that stick up these are the flanges. This metal in the middle, that's the web. The web may have a little bit of a bend to it, and that'll kind of straighten out when you clico the whole thing together. So you're not really worried about that. What you're worried about basically is that the holes running down here, if you put a straight edge on those holes, they should all line up perfectly. And what happens when they take this metal and put it over a block and then form those sides down, especially when there's a curve to that, um, is it will tend to take the bottom edge of this and it will make it bend this way. So you'll have some holes that are up here uh, and then the holes in the middle might be closer to the bottom as it sits and, and then the other end is down. So when you put the fluting pliers on there, what it does is it shortens up basically the distance between the two holes. And what you'll find is if, for example, you have, you know, three holes in a row here and this hole in the middle, when you put a straight edge on it, seems to be further that way than the other two holes. When you bend this with a fluting plier, you'll actually watch that hole kind of move back in line. I took a little video of it so you can kind of see how that happens. But I read through the instructions quite a bit on the fluting process, trying to really understand what it was I was looking for. And they were pretty clear about it that, you know, it's not the web, any warping in the web. You might have to hold it down to kind of straighten that out. And that'll happen when you click the whole thing together. What you're worried about is making sure your holes are perfectly aligned so that the holes on your ribs match the holes on your skin. And you want those to be nice and straight. And the only way to do that is to flute that material. So that's what fluting is all about. I finally figured it out. And it's pretty simple. Essentially, I, what I found, you know, they say put it on a table or something flat and you can kind of eyeball it and look at it that way. Really for me, I think the easiest way was just taking a straight edge like this, you know, starting at the back hole to the front hole and then looking at all the holes in between and seeing if any of those were out of alignment. Where they were, you know, if you squeeze it, the hole goes one way. And if you squeeze it and the hole goes in the opposite direction that you were hoping for and made you just made it worse, then you can just flatten that piece back out and then it's probably somewhere else that you need to squeeze to again shorten up parts of the material until they all run in a nice line. So that's fluting. So I spent a good bit of time fluting and then also taking all the edges and rounding them out, smoothing them all out, making sure basically that there's nothing that's gonna kind of stick up and show as an imperfection through the skin. So I'd heard some horror stories about trying to get the uh, skin attached to the skeleton, but it, uh, it all went pretty smooth. And I think the key to it, uh, based on my experience and also based on some other videos that I 
watched recently, I think the key was starting at the leading edge, working your way back from there. And more importantly, starting at the leading edge without the material being under stress. So as you see, I kind of tipped it up on its end. And that way it takes all the strain off of that. I got the leading edge holes lined up. Clicoed that, worked my way down. And then from there, lay it down on the side that's already clicoed. And right now what I'm doing is I'm actually clicoing underneath the main spar uh, on the back side for all the skin. Just making sure that none of the corners that are up in here on the flange itself is in any way kind of pushing back against the skin. And they're not, they're kind of curved. You're just slightly under it. So I think that is the way I want to go. So, so far so good, everything looks pretty good. They make a note that you shouldn't have to force the skin on there, which we're not. Holes are actually lining up fairly easy. As you go along, you just might have to reach in and pull a rib just a tiny bit, you know, up or down to get the line started. And then once you got a couple of clicos in it, the rest just kind of fall right in line. So again here, I'm not having to pull the skin toward any holes. What I'm doing is just pushing the rib itself up just a little bit to make sure it's in line. That looks good. And this is why you want your holes that are in the ribs themselves to all be in a nice straight line, which is why you flute it so that once you get a couple of holes click it in, everything else just falls right in line. So I know I talked about the blue paper and, you know, taking it off, leaving it on, and said that I'm going to leave it, uh, take it off, and I am. So it's fine to clico it together and do the initial match drilling or any upsizing that you need to do with the blue paper on because it won't impact anything. Um, before you squeeze it, you certainly want to take it off. Um, and like I said, some people will just remove a strip where the rivet holes are. I'm going to take it all off, I think. Um, so I'm leaving it on right now while I'm fitting it together because obviously there's a lot of chance of scratching things up, sliding the skin onto the, uh, to the skeleton and everything. So I'm leaving it on for that, and then I'll match drill all the holes. Um, and then when I take it all back apart, before I uh, dimple it, I'll take the blue stuff off. So one little issue that I have, there's a rib right here. I need that rib to move up just a little bit, which I was able to do with my hand underneath when I did the other side. But I've closed up this end and I need to get my hand up under there. So I'm gonna open up this corner here so I can get my hand under there. I'll do this guy and then I'll do that guy. So here you can kind of see what I'm talking about. That, uh, that rib underneath, you can see the metal there. Uh, and a couple of these holes, just a little bit out of alignment. So I just need to get my hand under there, push the rib over that way just a tiny little bit, and then I can set the rivets in there. Um, so I'll just open up that back end and then slide my hand under there and then I'll close it back up. All right, so we've got the skin clicoed on. This is what I was talking about here. 
This is where you want to make sure that your edges uh, aren't pushing back against the skin because that would put some dents uh, right out here in the skin, which obviously we don't want. And you can see here, these have a nice curve going to them and there's a hole that actually needs to get drilled. You can see on each side uh, and then I'll put a Clico in there. That'll pull that up nice and tight to the skin, but it's there's no bend whatsoever in the skin itself. So it looks like we've got our ends lined up very nice to the skin. No kind of bulges or anything like that between the ribs and the skin. Again, it was important to kind of put a bend in this that followed that taper where it's kind of wide here and then gets a little bit more narrow as it works its way up. All right, so there it is, vertical stabilizer, all clico together with the skin on. That actually went a lot smoother than I thought. I thought I was gonna have to work a lot more kind of getting the skin and the uh, skeleton to line up. But reading section five in the manual over there, which you know talks a lot about preparing all those, uh, those flanges to fit the skin, getting the curve and the angle right, smoothing the corners out, rounding things out. I think it really paid dividends because the skin, as you saw, it went on pretty, pretty easy. Uh, very little work involved that. I was, I was very surprised, pleasantly so. So that's done. So the next step in the instructions is I'll do number 40 drills, which is a 332nd uh, drill hole size in all of the skin, as well as the substructure of the skeleton where the skin attaches. Gearing those things up for the uh, 332nd rivets that will go in all of that. So far, so good. Everything's going really well. I'm having a lot of fun with this. It was a little disheartening to have to stop the other day when I did, but it's really fun to see something that actually is starting to look like an airplane part now. That's pretty cool. So, having fun, let me drill some holes. So now we just shift to Clico every hole and then drill all the other ones. All right, all the holes are match drilled in the skin and the substrate. Um, so the next step is to just mark positions on the doubler and all the brackets that are back here to make sure that after I take them off, and deeper them and clean them up that they go back on in exactly the same spot. So I'll mark those off and then take everything apart and start deburring. That should be fun. So now that I've got all the holes uh, deburred, all the edges are ready to go, the next step is to put the dimples in the skin. I'm gonna use the C frame for that. Um, essentially you center up one of the holes in between the two dimple dies, hold that down flat, and then whack it with a hammer a couple times. So what you're looking for on that, the first time you hit it, there's kind of a tinny sound to it, um, and that's initially making the dimple. And, and then when you hit it the second or sometimes the third time, it's a much deeper tone, and that kind of tells you that the dimple's been fully set. So I know I said it's a, a deeper tone, but it's actually, I guess, a higher pitch tone after actually listening to this. But you hear it, the difference between the second hit and the third hit, the noticeable change in the pitch. And as I'll show a little bit further on, um, I'll go to a fourth hit just so you can see there's no difference in sound between the third and fourth hit. Once you get that noticeable change in the tone, you've got the dimple set. If you listen to the sound on the uh, first, second, and third, there's a big difference in the sound as it goes. Uh, but then if I hit it a fourth time, you'll see it's not much of a change. The last two sounded the same. It tells you that you've pretty much compressed all the material.
and as far as how hard you're hitting this, you're really just kind of letting the weight of the hammer fall. You're not trying to strike this really hard. Uh, it's just a nice, smooth, consistent blow and really just letting the weight of the hammer fall down on it. So for the last holes on the tip rib, there's absolutely no way to get a squeezer in there with your dimple dies on it. There's just not enough room for that. Um, so Van has you make a little tool um, to try to make that dimple. And I actually bought one Cleveland Aircraft Tools sells it specifically for the RV-14 kit. Um, and it's basically just this piece of metal that essentially has the female part of the dimple die embedded on the tip of this piece of metal. And so what you then do is take the ram out of the C-frame, put the male dimple die in that, and then just put your material over that and then strike it just like you did on the C-frame. And the end result is a nice dimple. And here I've switched out the yoke on the squeezer. This is what they call a flange nose yoke. And as the name implies, it allows you to reach over the top of a flange, like I am on this piece, to set the dimple or set a rivet. All right, so everything in the tail section has been dimpled. The skin's been dimpled. Um, now everything gets primed. And then once that's done, uh, I'll put some countersinks on the back of this, uh, which is the rear spar, and that'll match the dimples that we just put with the uh, 1 8 inch dimple dies in the bottom section of the rear spar. And then we'll assemble. So I'll end this video here just because I don't want the videos to run too terribly long. And then the next video will finish up this section of the aircraft, priming all the interior parts and then ultimately assembling, riveting everything back together. And that'll wrap up the vertical stabilizer build. So it'll span the course of three videos. In the future, the videos won't have to cover as much material, but for these videos in each one, I wanted to talk a little bit more in detail about each step in the process. The dimple dies, riveting, squeezing, the different yokes, different setup, the deburring process, the priming process, and all of that. So we won't get into the weeds on that on all the future videos. So I think we'll be able to do similar length videos, but kind of cover a lot more material. So hope you're finding that all useful. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.